Okay, we are live. What's going on, everybody? Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Good afternoon. I guess it's about one o'clock here in uh, Los Angeles time. I hope you guys are having a, <clears throat> a great day. I'm excited to talk with Ashton Kutcher today. Uh, in about three or four minutes, he'll be coming on. And, um, you know, we're going to talk about his new wine company that he started to raise money for, um, for Corona Relief Fund. Um, we're going to talk about business, about the economy right now, economic times, about what his advice is for small business owners and entrepreneurs. So um, I'm excited to talk with Ashton. Uh, a bunch of you guys are asking about the book club. Yes, we have our book club tonight, um, which is on the, uh, the book Think and Grow Rich, which I'm excited about. And um, if you guys aren't in the book club and want to join, you can still text my number in my profile. And um, oh, and there's my mom who will be joining us in a few seconds, but she can come on right now. Let's see. Uh, Maria. Okay, we can add her. Hi. What's going on? How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm excited for you to come to the other room in a minute so that we can talk with Ashton Kutcher. Yes, I'm super excited. I love Ashton. I uh, really admire what he's doing with his wife, Mila. He's also been very involved in lots of other things uh, before this moment. So I'm excited to talk to him. I'm excited that we're doing it on your page. I wanted to just tell everybody that's used to coming to Home Together on Maria Schreiber that we're all shooting on over to Patrick Schwarzenegger. I hope you'll join us. And uh, over there, he's in front of the balloons. I got those balloons for Mother's Day. They say, love you to the moon and back and happy Mother's Day. They still have air in them. So we're gonna sit in front of them today. Makes me feel good. Yeah, so we're doing the, we've been, for people that don't know, we've been doing these home together conversations every single day. Um, you know, we're putting it on the YouTube and, and we'll stay on the Instagram for people that uh, want to watch it. But um, yeah, we're excited to talk with Ashton and, and do it on my, <clears throat> my page today and talk specifically about kind of business and what Ashton's been up to. So, uh, Mom, if you want to head over to this room, we can, okay. we can get started and, and I get find off Ashton. Now. I get off now. I'll get you off. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Okay. Okay. Get me off. Uh, you're off. Don't worry. So that's what we've done. We've started to hack it where she goes live right before uh, before she walks into the other room so that she can tell her people. Um, but yeah, we're super excited. So if you guys have any specific questions for Ashton, um, you can comment them or put them below in the question section. Um, but I'm sure most of you guys know Ashton from his... Uh, his uh, acting days and doing tons of acting and modeling. But in the last five to 10 years, he's really um, increased his business portfolio with being one of the first, you know, users on Twitter and, and actually the first person I think to reach a million followers. And then wow. he has, um, you know, his whole fund, which he'll, I'm sure he'll talk about and the A plus and, um, and then specifically what we want to talk about today is his wine company quarantine. It's called, it's literally called quarantine. And it's 100% of the profits. Everything is going towards uh, Corona Relief Fund. So, um, yeah, he and his wife have picked out uh, several organizations that are on the front line uh, that they work with that they wanted to support. So, by purchasing the quarantine wine, you support those organizations, which are helping first responders, helping with food, giving aid directly. Um, so, it's a really ingenious idea that they came up with and it he is. told me that he had to come on today because they're going to be sold out <laughs> by friday so he said he can't wait till the weekend he can't wait till the end of the week because they are going to be sold out a lot of people drinking wine right now a lot of people drinking wines so we have to find out once they sell out will they do a whole nother batch we'll find out or maybe yeah. they'll go over to vodka or tequila or something oh, else maybe we could partner with them they probably don't need us to partner with i them. don't think they I need us so. but who knows yeah maybe they want Did you the, tell uh, people i'm your mother i think people know that this know? is my mother oh, and okay. those are her wonderful mother's day balloons that uh that we got her for mother's day the other day yes. so um 
I think that, that they know. They know. So, and they know that we've been doing these home together conversations with the helpers, the healers, the cultivators of hope. And there are so many people, which is so inspiring to me, that are using their platforms for good, who have been creative in this time, who are uh, giving back in really creative ways and have stepped out of their own comfort zones to help others. And that's kind of what we've been trying to use our platform for is to highlight those people who are doing good right. and uh, to bring them to your attention and use our platforms for good as much as we can. Yeah, we've been really fortunate to get to yeah. interview, uh, I mean, tons of different, you know, people that have been using their platforms to help give back, um, to kind of spread optimism, to raise money. Um, I mean, I just saw the other day, we talked with Guy Fury and he just yeah. reached $20 million this week. For Restaurant Relief. For Restaurant Relief, which was wow. huge, and Bethany Frankel, um, wow. A jet setter man says, Patrick, are you wearing makeup? No, but we got this beautiful light, this circular light thing that helps. I actually am wearing Makes me maybe, uh, maybe look uh, a little younger or something. I don't know. But thank you for the compliment. Someone thinks I'm wearing makeup. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> Ashton and Mila are so inspiring. I can't read because I'm so far about, uh, away here. Well, you but can scoot up if you but want. Um, I think what's so exciting or what has been, you know, there's the numbers are staggering of the millions of people who are unemployed at this time, who uh, find themselves in situations they never imagined. So I think it's so inspiring for people to step up and think of creative ways that they can help do all kinds of things. Uh, and we can all help, even if it's just by helping one person at a time. I think that's something that each and every one of us can do, whether it's dropping food off for a neighbor, whether it's calling somebody who's homebound, whether it's staying at home ourselves, yep. or whether it's coming up with a wine company like Ashton and Mila, but there are all different kinds of ways to be of service now and that make a real direct impact in other people's lives. And I think that's what's so inspiring. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to give a million dollars. You don't have to start a huge nonprofit. You don't have to do you know, something ex extra extraordinary. You just can do one thing that will change another person's life. And that's good enough. Yeah, I think I forgot who said it the other day that you don't you could still lead. You don't have to be the leader to lead. Yeah, everyone leads in their own ways. And whether that's staying home to help other people, whether that's raising money, or whether that's donating to someone else, there's there's tons of different ways. Um, I think Sydney just messaged me. So maybe she messaged you. Sydney works with us and she's maybe yes. just messaging us to tell us tell us that Ashton is running late. So I can I run know. and go look. Yeah, maybe grab your okay. phone to see. I'll what. grab my wine and go over here. Yeah, go. grab your wine. Don't open it. It's too early for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Talk about uh, your book club. Yeah. yeah. No, people on here already asked about the book club. We're going to do the book club tonight, which I'm excited about. The first 100 pages on get, uh, Think and Grow Rich. So for anybody that's interested in joining the book club, you can text me and my number and my profile. And... Um, and be part of it. We just kind of zoom once or twice a month. And, uh, and then a lot of people are asking me about my ice cream eating. And um, your ice cream eating. I love ice cream. I do. About your Patrick's Pints. Patrick's Pints. I do, I do, I do. Probably go crush a pint right after this to celebrate. Um, okay. Well, so I don't know what, hold on. Let's see. I mean, Sydney messaged me, but I can't open it. And she didn't message me. So maybe. That means that I don't um, know. maybe Sydney, if you're watching, you can message Maria because I don't have. Uh, well, it could be that Ashton open... comes in under a different name. Oh, no. Uh, oh, there's somebody from Poland. Wow. That's exciting. It's exciting that how many people have joined us from all different parts of the world. I, I, think I love. You should uh, text Sydney. Okay, I'll text Sydney. Um, and ba -ba -ba. Sydney, Sydney helps us. Sydney's great, and. Um, Anyway, but uh, that's, um, so everybody, there's a lot of, we were just reading that the mayor here said oh, that- it says Ashton is here. Okay, well then let him in. I, okay, well let's see, he's on my uh, requests. I don't see him, so. Um, well, he, ha he has to go, he has to go over to uh, take care of his kids and he had only a small spot, so. Yes, we'll be quick with him, we'll be quick. Not too quick. Not too quick. Maybe quick. he has a special name. Um, A plus K, I believe, is his, his Instagram. A plus um, K. But it doesn't... Oh, there he is. Whew, we Gosh. got him. I found him in the woodworks. Wow, you found him hiding. Hiding. Maybe he was like... <laughs> maybe he was 
There hey. he is. That was a technical feat joining. I've never done a live Instagram before. It's the first time I've ever done this. And it was a technical feat just figuring out how to join. Uh, really? <laughs> Where are your firsts? Well, the, the request to join button, they've got it hidden from a product sensibility. They've got it hidden down in the messages. So you got to scroll all the way through just to make the request. And then it's faint at that. I, I got some product notes. I got to call the people at Instagram. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah I agree with you because I also struggle with this. But anyway, so good to see you, Ashton. And thank you so much for joining us. Good to see you guys. Your hair is giving me a run for its money. That's, that's I, a great deal. Let me tell you something. This I, I've become a big believer in the headband as okay. a result of this. And now it's just a regular staple in my life. It's like, get this stuff out of my face. So maybe you'll start selling uh, headbands next to raise money. But but why don't we start right in on the uh, on the quarantine wine, what you're doing with that. You're raising a lot of money. I think it was up to a million dollars as of this last week that you've raised just by, by selling wine. Tell everyone what, what kind of the idea was behind that. And where they can get it. Yeah, we, we had we had this um, uh, group of folks that we've just been kind of chatting with in the evenings. And uh, and it's like every night, like somebody would grab a glass of wine or a bottle of wine and everybody just be kind of chatting about what they were drinking. And Mila had this brilliant idea. She's like, we should just make a quarantine wine. I'm like, yeah, but we're under quarantine. So how are we going to pull this off? And we had we have some friends that have this company called Knocking Point and they they basically do this online subscription wine service and, and make a bunch of really good wines that we like. And so we called them up and we're like, hey, could, could we do a quarantine wine? And they were like, yeah, let's do it. And I was like, well, how long do you think it would take? And he was like, I don't know. Like, I can't imagine a lot of people are like, you know, registering for wine labels right now. And that's usually the most arduous process. And so we came up with an idea for a label and sent it in, got it approved, filed for the trademark. And, you know, away we went. We've sold now, I think, like 8,000 cases of wine. Wow. Uh, and, you know, all the profits are going to... Uh, a bunch of charities that we vetted from, uh, you know, Frontline Defenders Fund um, that's powered by Flexport um, to Feed in America, to the World Kitchen Group, to uh, like Direct Relief. We went yeah. through and just vetted a whole bunch. Uh, and and at, we actually reached out to that group that inspired us in the first place, that the, the chat that we have every night and said, what are the best charities that you guys have seen? And then vetted them all and figure out the ones where we could send the profits to you and, and, and help some folks out. So Ashton, this is, you know, it seems like a really kind of like far fetched idea. You're sitting around, you think like, okay, can we come up with a wine? And do you think anybody will buy it? And, you know, people might get daunted by that idea, but are you yourself surprised that it's been so successful and that you actually got it done? Well, here's the thing, right? Like it doesn't matter who you are. Everybody's afraid to throw a party. It, like who, it doesn't matter who you are like you're everybody's afraid to throw a party because if you throw a party there's a chance that no one comes and then you've got to deal with like that ego blow that you know nobody came to your party and so we were you know a little bit you know tentative uh to do it uh and so we we only ordered like 2,000 cases of wines because we're like yeah we'll probably be able to sell like 2,000 cases of wines and so we started there and and within eight hours we sold 2000 cases of wine and we're like, Oh man, we've got to get more juice. And then it became a process that I spent, we spent like a week like tracking down uh, more of the same wine so we could continue selling and continue raising money. Um, but I, I guess like I, you know, as an actor, you go in and, uh, you know, you get told no for more jobs than you get told yes by far. Right. And so, you know, I'm pretty used to rejection. Mila's pretty used to rejection on that front. Me and, too, me too. And, and as an entrepreneur, you know, I've probably started more companies that have failed than I have companies that have succeeded. And, you know, everybody hears about the success because, you know, it's more fun to talk about the successes, but we all fall down and we all fail and we all throw parties that nobody comes to. And right. it hurts, but get over it. You, you know, so, so what, if we fail doing something that we believe in, at least we still have the belief uh, that we were doing the right thing. And that's all that really matters. So Ashton, I know you told me that you thought you'd be all sold out of this wine by the end of the week, but where can people help you sell it out? And then if you do sell it out, will you keep going? Will you find more wine? 
Okay, well, I think that we have a little bit left, um, but no, we cannot find more wine. We would have to like go and go start the process all over again. We found every single bottle of this stuff that exists um, at this point. And, and if, we, if we had to get more wine, we'd have to like refile for a new label and do a whole thing. And so it's, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a giant rigmarole, but we have, we have a, a little bit left. I think there's like a couple hundred cases left or something. So people go to officialquarantinewine.com. Uh, they can find, uh, we, they can find the wine. Officialquarantinewine.com. We'll pin that up. Official warranty. Quarantine. Official quarantinewine.com. Uh, and all the pro profits go to these four organizations that they've picked. I actually know them. They're great organizations. And so you can go and get the last batch because he said he's going to be totally sold out by Saturday. Well, this will be, be collector like item. We're like supreme. We're like the supreme of one. It's, <laughs> it's gone. Go get in line, get your brick, and then get out of Dutch. That's right? super cool. So, so talk more about, you, you were talking about kind of rejection, failure, the idea of uh, from the acting side, but also from the entrepreneurial side. I think so many people that you know, follow you and listen to you these days know you from your, your business side, your business ventures, your, the fund you have. Um, get, what kind of advice do you have for young entrepreneurs that are out there right now that are thinking about starting a company that maybe want to start a company that have already spent the last three, five years doing all the research, doing everything, and now they're entering, entering this kind of economy? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> well, Come on, come on. It's funny, M Mila and I were talking last night and, um, you know, I said, I said, uh, I said to her, I was like, you know, ideas are really fragile. Um, and, you know, I think oftentimes we have all these like ways to share our ideas through Twitter and Instagram and this one and the next thing and whatever it's going to be. And oftentimes people just, you know, they get an idea, they're like, oh, this is a brilliant idea. And then they share it before they're ready to defend it. And I think one of the, the, the most dangerous things that entrepreneurs can do is have an idea and then share it before they're ready to defend it. And, and getting ready to defend it takes a lot of preparation, right? It's like understanding your market, understanding your competition, understanding the data that supports your thesis. Uh, and, and, you know, and then, and then talking to experts that are open-minded. There's a lot of experts that you talk to in spaces that you're building into that um, are, are very closed-minded. Like they, it's kind of their way or the highway, or they have something that they're defending. Therefore, they won't give you the opening in, 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 that, that, that you believe exists in the space. So, you know, connecting with experts that are open-minded, battle test your idea a little bit, and then put it out into the world. And the truth of the matter is, is I look at what's happening right now as an unbelievable opportunity, right? right? Like if you weren't building a company that had virtual bones before this, you're in deep trouble right now. Right. But most of the anti-fragile companies that have built, built in, into like virtual sales, they built out virtual models, virtual SaaS tools, they're actually thriving and doing relatively well because – you know, people are still buying stuff. They're just buying it in a different way. And, mm -hmm. and, and so, so, you know, if you're entering into this market and this isn't a market that you're going to thrive in, that just means that the future isn't a market that you're going to thrive in. And so you need to rethink your idea and rebuild it because this pandemic, this is, this is one. And I was watching a documentary the other night and there are like 1.2 million viruses that have been transferred to animals that could be transferred back to human beings. And we never know if the next one is going to be worse than this one. I mean, this one's like the perfect cocktail of it being respiratory, it being slow to kill people, but it does kill people. Mm -hmm. It being easily transferable. This is the first cocktail but these viruses are just going to get smarter over time. Right. And with global warming and the change in temperatures that are taking place, we don't, we don't know how these viruses are going to react and it could get worse. So this could, you know, in the future, we might have quarantine time every year where everybody ends up in their homes for two to three months. And so if you're thinking about building a business, you should think about building an anti-fragile business that can thrive during this type, type of type of economy and type of market. 
I love that. Ashton, what advice would you give? There's so many young people co graduating college. Patrick has a younger brother graduating. These guys and girls all thought three months ago they were entering a boom economy. They're all coming out and they don't, maybe they can't start a company and they're feeling like they have no clue where to go, what to do. What do you look for in a young person getting out of school right now who uh, doesn't have a job? So, uh, you know, it's tricky because a lot of companies are throwing down hiring freezes right now. Um, and I gave, I gave some advice at the Teen Choice Awards several years ago. And the bottom line is you, you, there's no job that is beneath you. And I think there's a lot of people that have this attitude that they're getting out of college, they have a degree in something, and suddenly, like, they can't have a job that is beneath that degree that, you right. know, and, and they look down on certain jobs. Right now, there are a lot of jobs that are available uh, in a lot of industries that are, you know, high potential risk jobs at this point, you know, inside of grocery stores, delivery right. folks you know, drivers, like there, there are a ton of jobs. And, and the truth of the matter is that they're good jobs that pay. And you might need to have one of those jobs until you can find the job that you want. Because mm -hmm. it's, it, it's just not gravy from day one, right? Like, like, yeah. and, and you're entering into an economy, by the way, we haven't seen the real recession yet. Wait mm -hmm. for Q2 earnings to come in because, you know, Q1, January, February was actually pretty good. The economy was still open. Right. Mm -hmm. and so it was just March. Wait for Q2 earnings to come in where you've got April, May, June, where people have been in quarantine and the economy is going to show it's real, really what's happening. We're going to, we have 20% yeah. unemployment. It, it's going to get worse and wow. those hiring freezes are going to get even more real. So my advice is, Go get a job. Like there are jobs. And you're, if you're young, if you're young and you don't have hypertension, you don't have diabetes and you're not overweight, your chronic risk with this thing, like 90% of the people that, that are, are dying as a result of coronavirus have at least one pre-existing condition, 90%. And 75% of those people have two pre-existing chronic conditions. So if you're young and you're healthy, I would say, like, go get a, a job in this market. Go get a job in this time to, to start to build up your coffers so that when it comes time to do the real job hunt and the opportunities are there, you're ready. And, and, and you're ready to take it. And you're, and you're not having to, like, you know, scrounge to figure out a place to live in this new market because then you can kind of – you'll have enough capital, hopefully, reserved that you can live in wherever your the job is that you can find. Um, right. And, th and then the second thing is when it comes to applying for a job in this time, the competition just got a lot steeper. Right. There's yeah. a ton sure. of people that have extraordinary experience that are unemployed right now. So, and, yeah. and you're fresh and you're coming out and you don't have a ton of experience in the space. You're graduating. It, so, so, the biggest thing that you can think about when you're applying for a job is time. How can you give your boss or your partners time? Because every boss and every partner in the world is looking for leverage, right? And, and they're looking to get time back right now and create efficiencies within their networks. And so if, mm -hmm. if your application, if your presentation isn't respectful and thoughtful about their time, they're immediately checking that box off and going, is this person going to, they're asking the question, is this person going to take my time or give me time? Right. Like is it worth it? Leverage? So, yeah. so really think about time and, and how from, from the moment you do your outreach, are you giving them something? Are you giving them time? Are you being generous? Because that's the only way you're going to find the right job in this market. I love that. And I love yeah. the idea of kind of the ego check of, of a lot of people yeah. that are coming out of college and nothing is beneath them. 
I, I wanted to just touch quickly on the all in challenge. I know that you and your partner had done something. Can you tell everybody because you had mentioned that people should go and try to reach out to people that are really experienced right now. What better way to do that than with your all in challenge? Um, I'm not sure if it actually just ended or not. But can you can you speak on that? What what the opportunity is? Yeah, so uh, we do a thing at Sound Ventures where our whole team comes together around, we really reserve this for like our portfolio companies, but we bring in our, our whole team uh, and we have a company sit down, present whatever challenge they have. You know, the first question is like, what's the biggest single thing that if you could solve would be a game changer for what you're doing and where you're heading? Um, and so uh, we decided at Sound to do a surround sound with anybody who wants to. We did, and I think it was like a sweepstakes style um, where um, in any company, large or small, um, that wants to tap into our, you know, idea network inside of inside of Sound Ventures can sign up. And once again, all the money goes, I think it's Beating America for the All In Challenge. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and we'll give you the best advice we got and uh, try to connect you up uh, and get you to the next level. I think that's, awesome. that's anybody can join that by paying $10. You can go into the All In Challenge and then you can get advice. So if you have that idea and you want to defend it and you want to get advice from the best and you want to do good, you can join, go to the All In Challenge. You can also go and get your wine. You can drink the wine before you go to the All In Challenge. It's all connected. And no, maybe, maybe all after, happy. maybe after, maybe after. Okay, let's, after, let's, yeah. Let's, let's, Let's do the work first and then, and then we'll have a drink to celebrate it. Okay, finally, I want to ask, ask you, Ashton, because you have two little kids and we've been hearing from families all across the country, right, how stressful this time has been with two little kids, with homeschooling. And when we tried to set this up, you were like, I have to take the kids at that time. Oh, that's my time with the kids. What have you learned about parenting during this time? Uh, just how much I love it. Um, it's, it's, it is this this in a way um i mean I, I feel so fortunate that i almost uh i almost feel guilty about it um you know we're we're in a really lucky position where mila and i both started working at a really young age and and have managed to make enough money where we can you know where we don't we don't have to be working right now um mm -hmm. and we're just we're just so freaking lucky man uh and and i feel guilty because there are a lot of people out there that aren't in that position and and uh, and i feel like every day uh i'm just trying to find ways to to help those folks out um but as far as parenting goes um you know teaching teaching's hard uh especially with little kids i mean we have a three-year-old and a five-year-old and I think the thing that they probably learned the most is like just how to sit down. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> sit down, sit down, listen, sit down. Can you sit down? Just sit down. You got to listen, sit down. Sit down. I, I mean, it, um, I was like, put that down. Don't touch that. No, we're not having a snack right now. No, like, um, so we, we've, uh, we've like quarantined out like a special room in our house that is like the classroom. And once we go into the classroom, we are the teachers. And, and, and not the parents, uh, which we, we kind of had to create an environment for that so that the kids would like kind of lock in and go, oh, okay, now it's time. There's a different set of rules that exist in here than exist, you know, in the rest of the house. Right. Um, and so I think that was really helpful. Um, you know, we've outsourced a lot of the schooling. So we, we have a friend call in once a week uh, for like 30 minutes and kind of um, teach our kids based on whatever the lesson for the week is going to be. Um, and so they sort of do an interactive like teaching lesson kind of thing. Um, I've also realized that really young kids find certain uh, digital tools very intuitive. And like my kids now know how to run Zoom. They're like, no, no, no I'm changing my background. Like I'm doing this, <laughs> and I'm like, wait, like they learned, they figured out how to change their background faster than I could, um, yeah. and so actually getting them to stop doing that and pay attention to what the teacher on the virtual school is talking about um, is uh, uh, that that is a challenge in and of itself. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I think the biggest thing is for for being with the kids twenty four seven now. I think we've been in quarantine for. I mean, we, we sort of quarantined ourselves like three weeks before everybody else did. Um, wow. And, it's been um, 
and we and so the biggest thing is like having every minute of the day programmed mm -hmm. even the free time like free time is programmed to the minute so that they're going from one activity to the next activity to the next activity to the next activity because those idle minutes sort of turn into um uh i, I think like my grand my grandmother always used to say idle hands are the devil's playground um <laughs> and, and so uh my the the, the kids stay active that's how, that just gives you an idea of how much education is going to have to change as these oh, yeah. kids grow up. After they experience this kind of learning, they won't be going into classrooms the, quite the same way as, for example, you did. No, for learning sure. And I think that's what Ashton said in the beginning, that there's, there are a lot of opportunities right now for people that are interested in business, for entrepreneurs. You know, people are still buying things. It's just shifting in the model of how. And so much has been transformed onto... Uh, you know, online, whether that's Zoom, and there's tons of other different options out there. But education is um, changing day by day. And um, but but Ashton, we wanted to we know it's we've held also, for too long. Your, your kids are probably I, I, I don't want to interrupt you, Patrick, but I, I would also say just on that front, um, you know, if, if people are graduating right now, and they're looking for jobs. Don't limit yourself by your geography. Um, because I think that that the virtual offices and virtual work, um, this experience is actually making them part of the norm. Um, right. And, and there may be jobs that are available, not even just in, within our country, but within multiple countries that, are, that is virtual work, that is a world workforce. Um, so, so don't feel like, you know, you're limited based on, you know, what are the jobs within your geography? Because right. Especially if you're someone who's getting a degree where, where you can do your work, you know, uh, virtually remote, you know, our, our entire team at Thorn, which we have, I think, like 70 plus people now on our team. Wow. Um, it's we've been virtual uh, for, for the last like five years uh, and every single person. I mean, we have people all over the country uh, that work with us. And so just don't limit yourself by your geography. Like think, think globally, think nationally based on where you can work because I, I think that virtual work is gonna become a piece of the norm. Right. I love Good that. So he's, think globally, think virtually, think no job is beneath you mm -hmm. and think about how you can save the person time. And drink wine after it all. And drink wine after it all. And drink wine that goes to a good cause. So Patrick, we want to your thank big, you, big Ashton, Your big so takeaway is drink wine. I love this. <laughs> we want to thank you for raising the money, for coming up with this creative idea along with your wife, raising money. Congratulations. We hope we sell a couple bottles for you. Uh, and we want to thank you for taking time out from your school schedule uh, to spend time with us to talk about what you're doing and the ideas you have for so many people who might be struggling at this time. Thank you guys so much. And thank you for doing this because I think just feeling a part of a community yes. uh, is, is really important during this, dur during this period of time and really important for our head health. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I appreciate you guys for, di for doing this. Of thank course. you, Ashton. Thank God you so bless. much. Good to see you. Kids. Okay. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Right. That's all very good advice. It was. Uh, it was there. great. It right? was really great advice. I'm going to go um, buy some of the quarantine wine because I think it'll become a collector's item. Yeah, I think we should. Let's yeah. go grab some. Let's go buy some of that. Um, I think a lot of people, if you're looking for an immediate business idea, it's to get Ashton a Wi-Fi, a good Wi-Fi router. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I'm fascinated with all of Ashton's experience that he's never oh done my God. Instagram Live before. I know. I mean, seems, but I'm you know, so glad that we were his first. No, I know. Seriously. He's really, made an effort he's really awesome. I mean, he has so much, you know, so many accolades in the, the acting space, the modeling space, the business space, the venture, the advising. Nonprofit. Nonprofit. Yes. So um, he's someone that I look up to in, in a lot of different fields. And I think he gave some really great advice for young entrepreneurs, for people that were interested in business, for uh, people that were just um, graduating right now to really not think of anything as beneath you and that there are some jobs out there that are that are um, you know being created that might not be the ones that you hope for but you know yeah. with time things will come um, I know a lot of people are probably wondering who we are I'm Patrick Schwarzenegger I'm Maria Shriver we've his been, mother yes my mother and uh, we've been doing these conversations each and every day and we try to continue to highlight different people that are utilizing their platforms to help give back, to find ways to help others during this pandemic, and um, to 
uh, kind of create optimism, spread optimism, and to give advice. So Ashton was perfectly falling under those categories. Yeah. Um, he's raised a million dollars this last week on his wine for, for um, those organizations for those that organizations. he listed, and they're all listed uh, on the site where you buy the wine. What where the profits are going and the good that those uh, organizations are doing. So. I think that's um, really yeah, great. Which was great. So thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, we're going to keep this video up. You guys can watch it and uh, bear through uh, Ashton's Wi-Fi. And we'll, uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Okay. Thanks so much for joining us. See ya. No. Oh, what? Uh, to go uh, off. Yeah, I know. I'm going off. <laughs> Okie dokie. And.